one of my favorite guests on this show or any other, uh, Ben Stein, actor, speechwriter, oh, author, TV personality, and more. Ben, welcome back economist. to the program. Economist oh, the economist business, too. Economist yeah. and lawyer. That's, I really need no training at all to be an actor, and I'm not very good at it. But anyway, how are you, sir? I'm good, but you 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 have done some acting, and you were a... St- I, have a I have had a career as an actor, but uh, I'm not really an actor by training at all, except uh, I guess I... I guess we're all actors in a way. As as Hamlet said, we're all actors in a way. Right. So what do you make of this Trump stuff, especially the uh, the latest imbroglios about saying something, then saying I didn't say it, and then saying I saw something, and people saying, well, it didn't exist, you couldn't have seen it? Well, he's a politician, and politicians exaggerate, and politicians make things up, and... Uh, the thing that I've learned at I'm about to turn seventy one, probably probably twenty years older than you, and I'm the thing I've learned is that human beings are human beings, and even great leaders, even uh, very rich people, are just people, and they make mistakes, they exaggerate, they uh, fantasize, they fictionalize. I don't know the specifics of the latest with Mr. Trump, and I don't know the specifics of the latest with uh, Dr. Garson. Uh, I do know that Mr. Obama certainly has not only made things, well, made, I don't know if I should say made things, but has withheld a lot of data about his life. And uh, so uh, I don't uh, I, I don't doubt that our leaders are going to be human beings with all human faults. And I don't blame Mr. Trump if he exaggerated things. Uh, he's, just, uh, he's just a person, and uh, I think he should be judged on his policy positions, which, which by the way, I don't think are that great. <laughs> But uh, I, but uh, to, to doubt that they're going to be people, that's doubting a lot. Well, okay, so it, do you think that uh, Donald Trump uh, and his his apparent popularity, I mean, he's still riding pretty high in the polls of Republicans. He's way, way high in the polls. Way he's high. Really high in the polls. Yeah, really high in the polls. Is this a du- direct reaction of those voters to uh, President Obama and what he does and says and doesn't do. I think it is. I I don't think if we had uh, John F. Kennedy as the Democratic nominee, Donald Trump would be very high in the polls. Uh, We have a mealy-mouthed president who uh, takes pleasure in thumbing uh, thumbing the eyes of the American people. I mean, that what he's doing about the refugees and the very legitimate concern that Americans feel about taking in these refugees is just thumbing his eyes in the uh, uh, and thumbing his sorry putting his thumb in the eyes of the American people. And clearly, the American people have a legitimate point. There are large numbers of Syrian refugees who want to come in. When you see them on TV, the line is endless, like the Israelites fleeing Egypt. But uh, it's perfectly legitimate to say, well, some of these are going to be terrorists. Some of them, of course, will be terrorists. Why not put a stop to it, wait and see what we can do in the way of putting in controls, and then not go for it? Instead, Mr. Obama says, I'm better than you. I'm morally superior to you. You guys are racist sons of bitches, if you'll pardon the crudeness of my speech. You guys are nasty clansmen and nativists. But uh, uh, the, the condition, the questions the American people raise are quite legitimate questions, and I don't uh, see why they deserve the condescension of a president. I can, I, I've seen a lot of presidents. I cannot remember seeing any presidents who are quite so condescending to the American people. Well, I mean, do you think maybe... It's never pretty, but from a public servant, it's really not pretty. Well, he, and look, he's done this before, but the latest episodes... Uh, following the Paris attack, he was out of the country. He had that horrible news conference in Turkey, and then he he right. went on to double down in Malaysia. Uh, do you think m- maybe because a president is traveling and sort of away from the feel of the country that he just didn't get it about how Americans felt about this last week? Well, I've traveled with the president. I worked for Mr. Nixon, and I know very well that when you're traveling with the president, the president gets a very thorough news briefing uh, several times a day, gets to know what's in the newspapers, gets to know what's on the TV and on the radio and on the Internet. So so I know that, that he, he was well informed of it. It's his basic idea that he is morally superior to other people. And, and uh, 
I think that's an unfortunate idea. I, I don't doubt that he has some uh, charming qualities. Uh, I have not seen what they are, but, they, but I'm sure he does. But, I mean, everyone has some charming qualities. But uh, this idea that he is going to tell us uh, what is right and what is wrong uh, is just uh, and what and and by the way that we're a bunch of ignorant backwoods uh, clansmen. Uh, I don't I don't get where he's going with that. It's just uh, I mean I, it just seems to me uh, pure snobbery. I'm reminded <laughs> I'm reminded of something you you may or may not remember, which was Agnew saying. I think Bill Sapphire wrote this line for him describing uh, a group of uh, left wingers and a feet core of impudent snobs. And I keep thinking that is the Obama administration and a feet core of impudent snobs. Ben, I'm looking at your latest uh, piece in the American Spectator. We just talked about this last hour, uh, but I, I'm sort of segue this, uh, uh, segue you over to this. Uh, last hour, we were talking about this controversy at Princeton. Uh, Woodrow uh, Wilson has been outed as a horrible racist, as if it was any secret. That was, that was well known about Woodrow Wilson. He he really was a terrible racist, and he was he was a Southern boy, and he uh, I think he was either in uh, Atlanta when uh, Sherman marched in, or in Richmond when when Grant marched in, but he. He was a Southerner, and uh, he he made sure the army was segregated. He, but I mean, what are they going to do? Go back and now just change everything in American history? Are we going to have a purge where we erase symbols of the past, like the uh, like the Taliban do and the Al Qaeda do, and they blow up statues of competing religions? I mean, what are we going to do now? America is America. We had a racist past. But let me tell you something, if I may, since you have me on the radio. America is the only country in the world in which 300,000 of one race died to free an entire other race. That's never happened before in human history. I would think that if, if I were a black man, I would take some gratitude and, and uh, humility about that uh, around with me everywhere I went. Well, and I'm looking at your piece in the American Spectator, and you are asking the question, whatever happened, what's happened to racism Today, the fake version oh is God. everywhere. The, the fake, the fake version is everywhere. If you if you if you just think somebody has driven by and given you a dirty look, uh, that's racism and that's cause for shutting down the whole university. If you if you think somebody defaced a poster at the queer student center, then that's some racism or sexism or something, and you shut down the whole university. I mean, you know, I, I had a I have a saying which I like to say from Karl Marx: all history repeats itself. The first time is tragedy; the second time is farce. Now, I was a very active student demonstrator at Yale long, long before you were born in the Ice Age, and uh, we had real, real, genuine grievances at that time. Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner had just been recently lynched. Uh, we had serious problems of racism on the New Haven Police Department, although th they were fine people. Uh, there were real, real serious problems. What's going on now is just child's play. It's just a bunch of screaming babies who don't want to do their homework. I mean, notice that the cry from these students is always, when, when, when we're being hurt, we're being discriminated against, don't make us do our homework. Well, that's nonsense. That's BS. Of course they should be doing their homework. It's their job. They're students. Of course, and, and by the way, the great majority of them, I suspect, I don't know for sure, are getting scholarships and grants and loans. They're being paid to be students. Of course they have to do their work. Ben, um, it's always great to talk to you. You know, you, you make the point uh, here on the program and, and in your latest piece that you had this just had this 71st birthday and you said uh, that you're at least 20 years older than me. Uh, I hope you know that in the upcoming year I will turn 70. Well, God bless you, sir. I, 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 you look so, you look so young. I uh, hardly could have known. But anyway, no, I, 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 when I see the student demonstrators, I want to vomit. Yeah, well, me too. I got in a lot of trouble with it last hour, so I'm probably going to leave it alone now. Well, you know what? We live in a gated community. I don't think we're going to have too many student demonstrators here. Well, it, it, with any luck. It's always yeah. good to talk to you, Ben. Uh, nice appreciate it very you. much. Thanks for your time. The great Ben Stein, uh, economist, lawyer, actor, TV personality, author, speaker, everything.